So, this is a game I didn't want to talk about. Sonic the Hedgehog Spinball was released initially on the Sega Genesis, Game Gear, and Master System in November of 1993. It featured a full-length Sonic game with the gameplay of Pinball, which, as I'm sure won't shock many of you, was a major inspiration for the series. The thing about this game is, it wasn't originally intended to be in the game continuity. The game features characters initially created for the Sonic Saturday Morning cartoon, and better remember today for their appearances in the Archie Sonic comic. The same characters who modern Sega of Japan would really prefer we forgot about. But that lack of canonicity seems to have been overturned, because Mount Mobius, the main setting for the game, appeared as an island in Sonic Origins. Ian Flynn, writer of Sonic Frontiers, has also made comments confirming the game's canonicity. So at this point, I have no choice but to accept that, yes, it is canon, and I'm actually going to have to play the game. This wouldn't be the first time. I've had this game as long as I've had any other Sonic game, on the GameCube Sonic Mega Collection, which was my first introduction to the series. However, despite having the game in my possession for 20 years, before now, I've never even gotten past the first board. The game is really hard and oftentimes feels completely unfair and opaque about progression. But you aren't here to hear my review of the game, nor the inner turmoil and existential dread I face approaching it. So let's just get to the story. Before we do, here's your regular reminder to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment before checking out everything else on the channel. The game opens up with Sonic and Tails flying the tornado towards Robotnik's newest base of operations, the Vego Fortress, high on the top of Mount Mobius. Within it, Robotnik has created his most powerful roboticizer yet, known as the Vegomatic, by harnessing the thermal energy from the volcano and the volatile power of the Chaos Emeralds. The use of the Chaos Emeralds in this game is a really weird one as the game doesn't feature six or even seven emeralds, but eleven. That's way more than we see in any other game in the franchise. Not only that, but they're also all the same color. Blue. My theory for how this works is that Robotnik only actually had control of one emerald, the blue emerald, and shattered it in order to spread its power throughout the entire facility. We see emeralds get shattered in some later games, such as Sonic Blast, so this seems like a viable explanation. Anyways, back to Sonic and Tails. On their way to the Vego Fortress, they get targeted by Robotnik's defense system and are shot down, crashing down to the ocean. Thankfully, Sonic, friend to all living creatures, gets saved by some of his animal friends and delivered to the Toxic Caves, the lowermost part of the fortress. Sonic begins trekking through the fortress, fighting against its pinball defense system. As he goes, Sonic collects whatever Chaos Emeralds he can find, or Emerald Shards if you agree with that theory. For the Toxic Caves, he enters the Lava Powerhouse, where the fortress is powered using the terrifying Road Boiler. With the power grid weakened, Sonic is finally able to approach the machine, the eponymous Vegomatic. In destroying the machine, he also causes the fortress to begin falling apart, and the Robotnik fires off the top of the fortress to escape. But Sonic, of course, has to chase him down. When Sonic manages to destroy the escape ship, both man and rodent are sent crashing towards the surface. Sonic is caught by Tails, flying a newly repaired tornado, the Robotnik gets no such safe landing, and crashes back into the Vego Fortress. As he lands, all of Mount Mobius starts sinking into the sea, taking the Mad Doctor with it, and ending the Sonic Spinball. Outside the main story, the only important thing to discuss is the world this game takes place in. While yes, this is the main Sonic universe we know and love, this is the only time I've found where the Japanese manual refers to Sonic's world as Mobius. This may be meaningless to some people, but fans of Sad AM and RG Comics know exactly where I'm going with this, as that's the name used for Sonic's world in both of those universes. These days, Sega refuses to use that name, so that in itself is probably not canon. But these bonus games that feature the RG characters of Sally, Mutsky, Rotor, and Bunny are the only appearances of these fan favorites in the current Sonic canon. These games also feature Scratch from Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog being his only appearance in the games outside Mean Bean Machine, which at this point I may also have to cover. That said, even if the world is no longer named Mobius, the setting of the game, Mount Mobius, still remains canon, so a remnant of that era does remain. In the timeline, I'll place this game at the end of what we currently have. It has to be after Origins for reasons of Tails being here, but the 2005 PC port of the game also listed as taking place after the events of Sonic 2 Game Gear and Sonic Chaos in its The Story So Far section. Shout out to Ellie on the Sonic vs. Discord for pointing this out to me. And that's it for this episode. 
Next time we're in Sonic, I have two more games I skipped over that, at this point, I should probably consider to be canon. So next time we'll be taking a good look at Sonic 1 on the Game Gear. Until then.